Each of you sitting out there has 50,000 thoughts a day. 50,000. As you're listening to me right now, you'll have two or three thoughts every minute that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I'll be up here trying to wax poetically. I'll say something I think is really good, and you'll think, and he's taller than the last guy. <laughs> and I'm trying to throw it out. I'm trying to really get into it. You go, I should go over and get some water. But will he notice that? But he said he's watching us. Should I get some water? <laughs> but here's the, here's the drill. Out of the 50,000 thoughts, what percentage of those thoughts do you think are negative thoughts? 50%? 60. Okay. Huh? 80. 80. Now, I don't know what this guy's been reading, but he's really close. You know, you know what the average percent of negativity is in, the, in, the, in most people? 90%. 90%. Is there any wonder why we hold ourselves back? Here's what I want to suggest. If we go to a point where we can control thought, where we can move thought to a specific area, will it excel? Today you're going to hear me talk about those 50,000 thoughts, what to do with them, how to, how to share, how to move them, how to focus better. In fact, I have a flip chart here, I'm going to even do some drawing, some talking. So the first concept is that with the 50,000 thoughts, I found that people hold themselves back more than anyone else holds them back. Just imagine for a second, you're driving a car, and because you're in California, you're using both feet. You know, traffic's bad, you gotta use both feet. See, in Seattle, you don't have to do that. But here, you have to stop real quick and stop texting. You gotta stop it quick. Okay? So here's what I'm gonna suggest to you look at your life as you're driving a car, as a metaphor for life. You mash on the gas, you're moving forward. A negative thought occurs to you, and you hit the brake. You move a little bit more, negative, negative hit the brake. It's gas brake, gas brake. Pretty soon that left leg gets tired and you'll leave it on the brake. Which could affect gas mileage. Which could affect success. Do you hear what I'm saying? But the negative thoughts hold us back. Before I got up on stage, I want to share something with you. I sat in the car for a moment, I was listening to some jazz, and I had one thought. Here, here's the thought. In a few minutes, I'm going to be on stage doing what I like to do the most to some people who really want me to do well. I want to be impactful. You see what I'm saying? That that thought changed how I felt. You can stop right now and think about something funny and it'll lift you. Or you can think about something sad and you go back. The power of your mind is what I'm describing here. The first concept is the start. How many of you in this group feel that you have more potential than you're currently using? Show of hands. Okay, here's my question for you. What are you saving it for? <laughs> what, what do you, I mean, is there going to be a big sale and you need potential to buy stuff? <laughs> huh? I know they have the big sales in January. Are you expecting a big sale and you're going to be at Nordstrom with all your potential to get ready to buy some shoes? Have sisters, I know that's big. <laughs> Just an aside, hey guys, I talked to my sister and we're really close, and she shared something with him. I'm I'm Michelle gave advice to the women, I'm going to give advice to the men. If you really want to impress a woman, stop with the candy and flowers. You want to get her attention? Buy her some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're me out there. Yeah. Best advice I've ever gotten from my sister. So let's go back to the start. The negative thought process, getting your foot off the brake. That would be huge for you. The more you realize that there's negative thought holding you back, that you talk to you more than anyone else, you'll be able to excel. In fact, the voice you hear the most often is your own. The voice you accept the most is your own. So when you say bad things to you, you believe it more. Are you here? You hear me on that? You believe it more. <laughs> The problem is someone will say something negative to you and you will repeat it to yourself a thousand times. It's not the impact of them saying it, it's the impact of you repeating it. You don't believe them so much, but you believe yourself as you repeat it. So let's turn that around. 
Years ago, I lived in a, a town near Chicago called Gary, Indiana. And I stayed there until the time I found out that you could just leave. I didn't know that. <laughs> I found out you could leave. I left. Now, during the time I was there, it was gang infested. Crime all around. I came from a family that lived on welfare. We were what's known in the industry as PO. We weren't poor, we were PO. We couldn't afford those other two letters. We were PO. Okay. Now, in the middle of all of that poverty, I was a juvenile delinquent. See, I wasn't like Chase, doing the right thing, coming to get some, some education today. I was a juvenile delinquent. At nine years old, I could walk by cars and see people lock the doors. I was menacing at nine. And my mom saw what was going on with me, and she sent me to live with my grandfather. My grandfather had a farm in a place called Barner, Arkansas. How many of you go to Barner on vacation? <laughs> it's like going down to, uh, what was that movie? Uh, Old Brother, Where Art Thou? Barner looks like that. I mean, you walk in and people got no shoes on, they're wearing overalls, and every other word is, uh, <laughs> that, they're clear, they get ready to say something when they do that. But here's what I got from my grandfather. I learned the art of affirmation. I didn't know what it was then. My grandfather was the hardest working person I've ever seen. He would work until he was drenched in sweat, and then he would stop and take out his handkerchief and say, feel that breeze, isn't that good? Okay, back to work. But during that time he was working, he would continually say words, whether it was to God or to himself, affirming that he could move further. Oh Lord, help me get through this. I know you can do it. He would just keep affirming so I can handle that. Stay with me, son. Come on, so we do this. He would just keep affirming. When you affirm that way, it displaces negative thought. So here's what I want to share with you on this, this concept. I want you to embrace the idea that you have more to do with your success than anyone else. I want you to embrace that idea. Here, here's the other idea I want you to embrace. I want you to just decide. In this room today, when you hear these speakers come up, I want you to pull from them selfishly. And then I want you to decide that I'm going this way. Now, if, if, if it makes sense to you that a person who has negative thought will probably not go far in life. Does that make sense? They will probably not go as far as they could. The universe works against them. Does it make sense then that a person who has the right attitude, who's up, who's attracting, will probably go further? Does that make sense? The universe is working with them. I want you to decide. 